in the same way that our culture is energy blind and we don't think about how we think too much and we're self blind, we're also systems blind. We don't think about how things fit together. So this is a brief video on systems blindness, systems and ecology. Many of you already know why Earth's ecology is important to our lives, but it's important to recall that each of us gets huge free daily benefits from the massive amount of things we get from Earth's ecosystems like oxygen, water, heat, cooling, photosynthesis, production of food, filtering of pollution, regenerative healing, etc. But in our current developed nation society, the focus of our knowledge and education is geared around the economy, inventions, procedures, profits, supply chains, computer networks, training and skills to get a job, etc. Yet all of this human commerce rests on a living, breathing planet, the home we call Earth. Amazingly, we in the USA, and indeed most countries, are not taught much about the fundamental importance of ecology, perhaps because the education market doesn't demand it. But ecology and its relevance to our future isn't just for the privileged and passionate. It's not even just for people who go to college. It's relevant and important for everyone. Ecology is the study of how organisms and chemical, energetic, and geological processes interact with one another in their environment. The word ecology comes from the Greek word oikos, or home. The earth is not only our home, but also home to many complex interacting networks of plants, animals, and microorganisms called ecosystems. The totality of these ecosystems, where all the living things on our planet reside, is referred to as the biosphere. Some other key concepts in ecology, which we don't have time to expand on here, are food chains and food webs, carrying capacity, and overshoot. In the modern United States, we find it rare to run into a person who is illiterate because our society places value on basic reading. The majority of people are also numerate, but one can now get by without knowing numbers and math in our wealthy society. But we rarely meet anyone at all who is ecologically literate or equalate because our society's current values and goals of quarterly earnings, jobs, making and selling products, so far have not considered equality relevant. Ecology is the science of what happens to living systems, what they can and cannot do, and how those conditions allow and influence the cans and cannots of our future. To your generation, having large amounts of people being equalate is going to be very important to our futures. Nature is composed of systems. A system is a collection of elements that interact and usually create emergent phenomenon. There are carbon systems, water systems, nutrient systems, biogeochemical systems. The components of an ecosystem are interconnected. Here's an example. In Yellowstone, in the 1990s, elk were keeping the willows short, usually less than two feet tall. And that led to stream widening. By 2017, because of a reintroduction of wolves who preyed on elk and kept the elk populations down, the willows around the stream were now six feet tall. This greater canopy cover led to a recovering riparian and aquatic ecosystem. There are lots of cool examples of the interconnected and symbiotic species in nature you can find online. Okay, here's a concept very important in nature. Feedbacks keep systems in equilibrium or move systems into new states. An example of a positive feedback in nature that moves a system to a new state is the ice melting in the Arctic. The ice is lighter in color than the dark blue ocean water and reflects more sunlight. As more ice melts because of global warming, more of the incoming sunlight is absorbed by the now darker water than what used to be reflected by the light colored ice. This adds more heat to the global balance, a positive feedback. A positive feedback, graphically shown on the left, accelerates and reinforces a behavior or a process. A negative feedback, on the other hand, inhibits or balances a behavior or a process, shown on the right. We see feedbacks as well in human systems. 
If you're taking a shower and it becomes too hot, your brain senses that and turns down the heat. This is a negative feedback where excess heat results in a behavioral feedback that reduces the temperature. Can you think of an example of a positive feedback at a larger scale? What about using more air conditioning globally because of global warming, but with coal and natural gas used for over half of the energy for air conditioning? So we use more air conditioning because it's hot out, but using more air conditioning creates higher demand for burning coal and gas, which are greenhouse gases, which results in a positive feedback, more global warming. A system with networks of interactions where an understanding of the individual components does not automatically allow for an understanding of the whole system is called a complex system. Your car, your television, your smartphone are all complex systems. They involve multiple independent moving parts that interact with each other to produce a desired behavior. Additionally, a complex adaptive system is where the individual and aggregate behaviors change and self-organize in response to events. Additionally, a complex adaptive system is where the individual and aggregate behaviors change and self-organize in response to events. Our human economic system and the biosphere of planet Earth are each complex adaptive systems. Another term in our whirlwind uh, overview of ecology is emergence. Emergence refers to phenomena or behaviors in complex adaptive systems that are not present in their individual parts and could not have been predicted in advance just from knowledge of the parts. Examples of emergence are fish schooling, birds flocking, the formation of galaxies and stars, or the development of consciousness in a baby. Here's an example. When starlings fly, each individual starling in a flock follows three simple rules. Number one, do what your neighbor does. Number two, don't get too close. And number three, move towards the center. By each individual bird following these rules, we get the emergent behavior of beautiful murmurations, shapes and movements in the sky that appear to constitute a single simple organism because in many ways they're behaving as one. As we're gonna see in later videos, this collection of individuals behaving a certain way, manifesting in an emergent collective behavior has very important modern parallels in human society. Can you think of what that might be? Sometimes focusing on the things we know and care about cause us to miss the larger picture. The classic example is people with blindfolds describe different phenomena like a snake or a tree depending on which part of the elephant they are feeling. They are feeling parts of an elephant but don't realize it's an elephant. In the same way, we tend to focus on the aspect of our global predicament that we know the most about, or care the most about, or have heard the most about, without seeing how the whole complex adaptive human ecosystem fits together. Society now is on the cusp of emergence, not only in our collective impact, but in human collective thinking and understanding about our situation. I suspect the key insights we're going to find about the future will be between the disciplines, not within the disciplines. Just like the individual brushstrokes don't inform you much when looking at an impressionist painting, it's only when one steps back one can see the beauty, art, and what the picture represents. A similar stepping back, using a bird's eye view, allows us to see connections, emergence, and relationships in the human ecosystem. In contrast to this systems thinking, reductionism is an approach to understanding the nature of complex things by reducing them to the interactions of their simple parts. This is a powerful technique, but it's inherently limited in understanding or predicting complex outcomes and systems. Our modern education system probably because of our modern economic system, has in the past generation or two rewarded reductionism or the hyper-expertise in one subject area. While we absolutely do need experts in engineering, in agricultural methods, in technology, our society arguably now needs many more people who are competent generalists or who can see and understand 
how the whole picture fits together. This is the goal of and importance of liberal arts educations and really should be integral to all disciplines and schools. The above diagram is a simplified description of our modern human ecosystem. We come up with ideas and inventions and technology which combine human labor with energy and renewable and non-renewable resources and turn them into products. We create money to represent the value of these products and exchange and use them to generate similar emotional states to those which motivated our ancestors. All of this has impact and generates waste. The environmental waste and social impact is for the most part not included in the metrics and goals of our current economic system. So let's take a closer look at what economists call our externalities. <laughs> 